In terms of my advice to Vermonters, I, I wouldn't put myself in a position just to advise you. I'm not a Vermonter, and I, and I couldn't say which way the legislature should vote. And I, I, truthfully, I didn't make the film you know, to kind of sway a person's viewpoint one way or the other. It was really just the desire to tell these personal stories, um, more than anything, those personal stories. And I think that hopefully in that, you know, it, it provides kind of invaluable context uh, and first, first-hand experience as Vermont considers this law and as other states consider the law about um, what the real personal choices and decisions are as a person's considering the law. I'd just like to um, briefly note that Governor Peter Shumlin is in the crowd, and I don't know if the governor has anything he wants to say or. And, uh, I'm sorry I missed the film. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. But uh, I just want to say, uh, just having gotten a cue from Joel, that uh, the film was extraordinary. Congratulations, Peter. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, I think that as your governor, I can tell you that uh, I'm very much hoping that we join Oregon in this legislative biennial in passing a bill that gives Vermonters choice when they're terminally ill over how they're going to end their lives and how they're going to spend their last days. And uh, one of the things that I find extraordinary about this topic is that we all know that it's a tough conversation. On the other hand, there isn't one of us that isn't going to have to have it. And so then you ask, well, why is it so tough? And I think about my own family. And my mom and dad uh, are 87 and, and something close to that. I can't tell my mom's age. If I'm in trouble. And um, they, I think this illustrates how tough this conversation is. They live on top of a mountain that no one in their right mind would live in in their 80s. Top of a dirt road, but it's a really steep hill. And it's sheer rice a lot of the years in wintertime on the months. And uh, so my brother and I decided it was time to have the conversation. So uh, we go up and we're sitting around and, you know, it's cocktail time, figured that might help. And finally, I uh, said, so what are you all thinking in terms of, you know, like 10 years from now? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they said, well, we're going we're gonna to die right here. And I said, uh, okay. Uh, you know, you're both very healthy, but you're living on top of a mountain, and, you know, 10 years from now, it's going to be tougher to get around, you know, 97. And uh, they looked, my dad looked at my mom and said, we're staying right here unless one of us goes first. <laughs> <laughs> so my brother and I left and said, boy, they really thought this one out. And I think that illustrates the struggle that we all have with our own families in terms of our inability to talk about planning for terminal illness and for our deaths. And one of the things that uh, I sometimes think about when we talk about this in the state house is how much energy that we spend as a society thinking about how we're certain that we're the best at bringing people into this world. We do. And we spend huge resources to make sure that we have the best birthing centers, that you have choice of a hospital birth or a home birth, and what we do with the home birth gets in trouble, how we get to the hospital and all the rest of it. And we're not capable about having the conversations about end of life. And all I can say about this particular effort is, I think we'll get this done in Vermont because Vermont, Vermonters have a conscience. They understand that your choice doesn't necessarily mean that you want to impose that on your neighbor. And that's why we're the first to end slavery. That's why we're the first to get rid of billboards. That's why we're the first to pass a bottle bill. That's why we're the first to pass marriage equality without a court order. Because that's what Vermonters do. We believe that we should take care of each other and that we should all have control over our own choices when we have to face tough decisions. So. Here's my hope. Uh, I want to thank Sha Speaker Shap Smith for his extraordinary support of this bill, who's here right now. Thank you, Shap. I want to thank all the legislators in the House and the Senate who've been working so hard on this. 
And I spent a lot of time talking to some of the votes that were short in the Senate, not twisting arms, because you don't twist arms on an issue like this, but just helping to share my judgment of why this is so important, having a dignified and decent state. And I hope that we can all do a little more work in the Senate so that this bill will be on my desk in this biennium so that we can do the right thing for Vermont. So thank you, Peter. Thank you. Peter. Are there other questions from the audience? <laughs> Did I intentionally make you cry? Uh, <laughs> no, I think that um, it's, you know, it's an incredibly moving story. And um, I, I just told the story that was as, as best I could of, of, of what was there and of what I saw and the, and the people that I met. And um, I mean, certainly your experience is not unique. It is a very emotional and, and moving story. I hope it's not a depressing story. I think that's something my, my co-editor and I always talked about is, yes, the film is going to be sad, but we, we don't want to make a depressing film. And it's going to be tragic, but we also hoped that it would be also kind of a life-affirming film. And in a way, the family, uh, the Curtis family talks about this a lot, that it's, it's you know, they, they feel that this film could be called How, How to Live in Oregon, and, and that they feel that it's a much, as much about living and the choices that you make today and how you're going to lead your life as it is um, about um, how you went your life. <laughs>